YouTube back with another Infinite Flight video. Uh, what I want to talk to you about today is the climb out to your cruise altitude. Uh, getting ready to come through 10,000 feet. So one of the first things we're going to be doing is uh, turning off the landing lights. And I'll do that right now. Okay, so as we're coming to 10,000 feet, we're going to go ahead and start accelerating. I like to do it in small increments and whatnot. I'll go ahead and increase my elevate my uh, altitude up to flight level 150 there and what I'm going to do is in small five knot increments increase the speed and then as the speed the indicated uh, airspeed on the left hand side reaches whatever speed I've set over on the right hand side I'll do it again what that does is it keeps the throttle from uh, overpowering you don't want this N1 to get up to a hundred percent and because it sounds, first of all, it sounds kind of crazy. Your engines are just sitting there revved up until it reaches this speed. Also, um, as you make your initial climb to 10,000 feet, you don't want to get in the bad habit of overspeeding too fast and getting dinged for going over 250 knots below uh, 10,000 feet. So the mark that we're looking for here is uh, 290 knots. I'll go over that with you as, as to the reason why in just a second. So I'm at the 280. You see I'll set this at 285 and then I'll wait for 285 to come up in the indicated airspeed and then I will add another 5 knots and add it up to 290. And as you see it, it never really went past what 80 90 percent and then I would hold this speed all the way to the cruise altitude and your cruise altitude is going to be dependent upon of course how far you've decided you're going and um, how high you decided you want to fly now if you're going to be flying below say 36,000 let's say you're flying between uh, 12,000 and 17,000 feet you can of course go ahead and increase this all the way up to say uh, 346 knots or 350 knots or what have you but let's say you're going to be cruising at um, uh, 30,000 30, uh, feet for example you don't want to take this past 290 knots and the reason is is if you're a beginner and you have not climbed that high before is that after you go past uh, flight level 280 which is 28,000 feet there's going to be a change and in this SPD block let me go ahead and change this I'm gonna put it up to flight level uh, 240 um, we're only going to climb for a little while longer as I go over these pointers with you right quick is that if you take this SPD um, indicator past 290 what's going to happen is that when you go past flight level 280 it's a transition altitude and infinite flight and it'll no longer read in knots it'll switch over to mock speed and the mock speed is depend that you're supposed to be flying at is dependent upon the aircraft that you're flying. And right now, we're in an A321. So you can see it. I'll show it to you right there. So we're climbing out right now. I'm not going to take this past 240 for now. I'm going to let it keep climbing as I go over this information with you. So our cruise speed in the A321 is 0 0.79 if I were to keep pushing this pass 
290 and take it up to say 356 or what have you and climb past flight level 280, what would happen is after I go past transition altitude, the mock indicator is going to be reading 1.4 or something. It'll be reading faster than the speed of sound. And that's what you don't want. Um, that's why you don't want to take this SPD indicator past 290. 290 is a normal climb uh, speed and whatnot. So try to remember that. Um, it actually doesn't take that long because uh, right now I should actually have dropped my um, my climb rate. So I apologize. It was uh, 200 uh, feet per minute too high. So I've dropped my climb rate down to 1800 feet per minute. You can set this to anything you want as long as you don't go past as if you're trying to fly um, a realistic flight. Um, 1800 feet per minute is pretty normal and then once I get to 2400 feet I would uh, reduce it to say a thousand feet per minute and then go ahead and go to my climb altitude. Um, as we uh, climb it's probably going to slow down um, the rate of climb will probably slow down but right now we've got about a six degree uh, nose tilt upward that is so let me uh, show you all something right quick we'll come right back to this I guess um, let's go let me find the the notes and then we'll all right, all right, so here we go. At 10,000 feet, we're going to turn off the landing lights, and then we're going to gradually increase to 290 knots. That's the throttle. We increase the throttle setting gradually, like we just did. And make sure you set an appropriate uh, vertical speed or rate of climb. They're the same thing. And then you want to consider climbing in the following stages. First to 10,000. I usually go to 10,005. At that point, I will go ahead and turn off the landing lights as I'm climbing through 10,000. Then I'll go 15,000, uh, 24,000, and then 40,000 or whatever my climb, my uh, my uh, cruise altitude is. It can be anything before uh, between uh, 24 and 40 thousand uh, sometimes I know a normal climb a normal uh, uh, altitude is 36,000 39 thousand or what have you the highest I've personally ever been in a, in a real airplane is a f uh, flight level uh, 410 I've never been higher than that you can turn off your seatbelt sign as you deem appropriate and remember that flight level 280 or 28,000 feet is the transition height in infinite flight and the Mach number of about 0 0.75 will appear for the SPD. You need to learn your aircraft and set it to the correct Mach number for your climb and cruise. The thing is you got to uh, understand that once that Mach number pops up you'll be able to change it up and down. Each one of the aircrafts has a different cruise speed for their uh, mock 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 speed and you can find this information online especially it's easier to find it for the commercial aircrafts than anything else um, you can go to skybrary.arrow I'll leave the link in the description box at the end of the video so uh, just to make sure you all have that I'll bring it back up and the end and again the most important thing make sure you learn your aircraft as a beginner all the information about your planes are online they've done a better job of being able to get back into uh, infinite flight after you pause it. it was back in the day if you pause it it would just reset itself so we're gonna continue to climb um, and I guess we'll get to about 
Uh, I do want to show you this this all this change. So what I'll do is I'm going to pause the video at this point. I'm going to go ahead and continue to climb, and when I get to twenty-seven thousand, I'll come back to you. All right, we are coming through uh, seven twenty-seven uh, hundred feet. Excuse me, 27,000 feet. Um, I'm sitting there setting my heading. So we're climbing at a rate of 1,000 feet per minute, uh, cruising at 290 knots. Uh, so what we're waiting for is the change, the at transition altitude. So if you've never uh, seen this happen before, what you'll see is that the mock speed is going to come up and um, I'm uh, just as a matter of note I'm going to be cruising at flight level uh, 310 for my flight into O'Hare and um, my mock climb after that will be 0.78 so you saw it popped up so I'll increase it one notch, and this is the speed that I'll be cruising at all the way to flight level 310. And then after I'm at that speed, I will, I mean at that altitude, I will then set my cruise speed to 0.79. And I will keep that speed until it is time for me to start my descent and um, I'll be making a video on uh, descent techniques uh, later on probably in a couple of weeks I'm in DC right now and we're snowed in and I have a lot of uh, a snow to shovel from in front of my house over the next couple of days before it starts uh, raining because it's probably going to end up with a lot of ice on the ground um, but I hope this uh, video has helped you. Uh, again, refer back to the notes and whatever you do, please, as always, take the time to study the aircraft that you're flying and so that as a beginner, you can make uh, this flight simulator more enjoyable to you. Um, it doesn't take long to learn. It is hard. Uh, in the beginning but because it's been out for so long there are a great number of people that are taking the time to put videos online and that's basically flattening the learning curve for a lot of people so um, make use of those videos that are online and uh, take the time uh, to study your aircraft and before you know it you'll probably be helping the next person to learn uh, infinite flight uh, so that's all I have for you. I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish my flight and uh, have a nice day.